Okay, okay, hey guys. So, as you can see, this week we're going to be making a cute little Rubik's Cube. I absolutely love this one because I was really obsessed with Rubik's Cubes when I was a kid, so this one really, really speaks to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, you guys know the drill. Um, open up a new scene. Um, this one's going to be pretty, pretty simple, just really um, repetitious. Yeah. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and make a cube. I think I left it just as normal dimensions, so you can kind of do whatever. Um, next thing I'm going to do is um, let's distinguish which piece this is going to be. I'm going to say let's go easy and let's just make this our centerpiece. Um, so basically the centerpiece of a Rubik's Cube only has one sticker, right? Only the top face has a sticker. So that means that all we need to do is extrude that one face. So just select the top face, extrude it, and then let's go ahead and offset it in by like point, point 0.1. And then um, select with that inner face selected, um, extrude again, and push your thickness up to like 0 0.05, really small. All right, looks good. Um, I don't think I'm going to model this guy in subdivision surfaces, but if you press three, you'll see it does something a little wonky. Um, so what, actually let's, let's go through and let's bevel just every edge. Just, just click all of them. Let's, let's really bevel just everything in this model. <laughs> um, I want it to look clean and beveling usually does that. Um, okay, so with all those selected, do control B for bevel, as you know, and then give it two segments. And yeah, that should be good. You can make the fraction smaller too, if you would like. Um, totally up to you. We'll see. Yeah, okay, so do a fraction of like 0.2 or something. 0.2 is probably good. Yeah, we'll do 0.2. All right, looks good. Okay, next thing. This next one is going to be a little more difficult. So go ahead, make a cube. Let's go into P cube 2. And let's see, let's translate on the X. All right, so if that was two, let's just do one. All right, and then do 1.2. I'm trying to make them really close together. All right, let's do 1.05. Sure, <laughs> um, that should be good enough. They're usually not that far apart. 1.03 probably will work better for us. All right, so we've got one cube. Let's say that this is the top of the cube. That means that this is going to be our left side of the cube. So go ahead, go into face mode, select those two faces, but you'll see when you extrude and offset them, they actually combine them, which we don't want to do. So when you select it, you have to do one at a time. So extrude this face first, then you offset it in 0.1, then you up the thickness, to positive to 0 0.05 and then you can select this face and offset it in by 0.1 and extrude and up the thickness by 0 0.05. Then you're going to go through and select all of the edges just like we did in that other one and bevel. I'll give you some time to do that right now and then after that we're gonna duplicate this guy three times to make our other edges, to make like a little cross pattern. You'll see. All right, looks like I got them all. Control B is beveling. And then we did two segments at a fraction of 0.2. All right, looks good. So, now what I want you to do is go ahead and select this guy in object mode and then do command D or control D, which is just duplicating it. So now what I want you to do is change this translate to zero 
so it's at the center, and then change it to negative 1.03. Now you can see he's over here, but his sticker's on the wrong side. That means that we need to rotate it. So if you press E, you can see we need to rotate it on this blue axis, which happens to be our Z. So go ahead, select that Z, and then change it to 90 degrees, which ends up facing the correct way. Next thing you're going to do is go ahead and duplicate that guy again. You can change the translate uh, to zero on the X and then change the Z to 1.03 so that it's above. And then as you can see, we're going to want to um, rotate it on this axis, which looks like it's going the negative direction. So change it to negative 90. Perfect. Go ahead and duplicate that top guy that we just edited. And then you can move the translate to negative so that it just goes on the opposite side. And then change this guy to be negative 90 as well. And then change this guy to be, let's see, it's going towards zero. So type in zero. Basically, it'll be in increments of 90. So if it goes lower, put in zero. If it goes higher, put in either 90 or negative 90, depending on which way it's going. All right, so looks like we've got our, our top face looking pretty, pretty good. Uh, as you can see, we do still need corners. So go ahead and create a cube. It's going to spawn at the origin, obviously. And then you're going to want to translate it to 1.03 and then translate the Z to 1.03 as well. So it fills in this top left corner. Now this one's a little bit more difficult because we have to do three faces for extruding. So uh, you guys know the drill by now, obviously. Hopefully you wrote down the increments you were doing all the buttons in. <laughs> so go ahead and extrude one face, offset it in by um, 0.1, and then extrude it and change your thickness to positive 0.05. Do that with the other two as well. And then um, we will be beveling all of those edges. Like I said, this, uh, this model's pretty easy. It's just really um, repetitive. So stick with me. All right, that's our edge. So now we're gonna go through and select all of our beautiful edges that we just made. So much fun, I know. You guys are just screaming with excitement about this one. Um, I know that these might not be models that you guys, you know, see yourselves like selling in the future or something, but the main purpose of these models are to teach you simple functions that you can hopefully use to uh, make more complicated things in the future. Um, for example, the dice tutorial helped us make this guy, right? Which I think a lot could probably argue that this guy is a bit more complicated than a dice. <laughs> Go ahead and bevel that guy and then change the segments to two. And then we changed our fraction to uh, 0.2. So just make sure you're being consistent since Rubik's cubes are really consistent. All right, great. So um, now with that square, we're gonna be translating it a couple different ways. So first we need to duplicate it. And then we need to change the uh, Z to be negative. So it hovers in this corner down there. And then we're gonna need to rotate it. It looks like it's rotating this way. So looks like that's on this axis, which will be negative 90. Sweet. And then you can duplicate that one. And then we're probably going to be moving it to negative 1.03. Yep. Perfect. And then looks like we need to rotate it that way, which makes it 90 on this axis. And then control D. I think I need to make this one positive. Yeah. Just kind of play around with it. Change this guy. And that looks like it's editing this one to be negative 90. All right. So that's basically the top face. All right. So before we do anything, what we're going to need to do 
is um, duplicate one of each of these guys and call them uh, wh whatever piece they are. So let's duplicate this center, uh, control D, and then call that guy center. And then take an edge, duplicate that, call it an edge, and then take a corner, duplicate that, and call it corner. That way we have one of every piece. Then in your outliner, select the first nine and do edit mesh and do mesh combine. That'll make them all one object. So you can call this like top face or something since it's the top face of the cube. Um, and then what we're gonna do is duplicate this top face. So with that selected, do command D and then we're gonna be pushing it down and rotating it. So first, let's just rotate it. We're gonna be rotating it on the Z, it looks like, to, we can do 180. And then we're gonna be pushing it down on this axis, whatever is a uh, three times our um, count. So I did 1.03. So if we do three times that, I think it should be 2.18 or something like that. Oh, negative, negative 2.18. I think it looks pretty even. Sure. All right, now what you're gonna do is take that center piece and then move it. Take your center piece and then we are going to move it on this axis, which is the Z. So do 1.03. So it's in line with that guy. And then we need to rotate it. Let's see, which way are we rotating it? This way? Yep. We're going to rotate it on this axis, so the x-axis, to 90. And then we need to push it down, which is this axis, to a negative 1.03, so that it's in the center. Oh, okay, so I was kind of close. So if that is negative 1.03, these guys are going to be negative 2.06, I think. Oh no, too close, too close. Oh, 09. Then it should be even. I'm gonna go one more and see if that looks good. Okay. Okay, do negative 2.12. So now we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did for the top face when we were like duplicating and all that stuff. So duplicate your center, and then we're going to be um moving it this way 1.03 and then we're going to be pushing it this way i guess to zero yeah it looks like it goes to zero and then we need to rotate it on this axis 90 degrees and then you're going to do the exact same thing for the other four corners so duplicate it Move it, negative 1.03, move it this way to zero, and then rotate it. Looks like we're going to 180 for this one. Yep. And then duplicate it once more for our last guy. Move it, negative 1.03, move it this way to zero and rotate it to, I guess it's going to 270. Yep. It all goes in increments of 90. All right. Now you can go ahead and select your edge that we duplicated a while ago. And we're going to be pushing it down. So that'll be negative 1.03. And then we'll be pushing it over another negative 1.03 and then we're going to be rotating it let's see on this axis it looks like yep so that one's just going towards 90. sweet and then go ahead and duplicate that one gonna move it all the way over here so looks like it's negative 1.03 on this guy and then 
rotate it on the red. Looks like it goes to a positive 90. And then you can duplicate that guy, push it this way. It'll be a 1.03 and then change it on the blue to be 90. And then for our last guy, duplicate it, move it. Looks like it's at 1.03 and then rotate it and change it to whatever value it is nearing. All right, so as you can see, that's basically um, the Rubik's Cube. Um, what I think is kind of cool is if you hide this top face doing Control H, you can feel, oh, you can, you can also hide. That was our spare, our spare corner in case we need to fix anything. What I think is kind of cool is um, if you haven't modeled um, or if you haven't taken apart a Rubik's Cube before, um, basically the inside is just like two cylinders that connect all of the, uh, the centers together. So what I'm just going to do is create a cylinder really quick. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to make it really small, make it pretty long. Um, since it's got to reach, you know, through a couple of these guys, probably like that to push it down. I'm just going to let it clip into the mesh since it doesn't really matter that much um, since I don't plan on making that one have subs on it. All right, that's pretty good. And then um, you can just duplicate that. Doing control D and then you can rotate it. It looks like we're rotating on this axis the Z, so change that to 90. And then you can just push that down a little bit so that it's um, more centered on those cubes down there. And then you can go ahead and do Shift H to unhide um, your mesh. So yeah, that's kind of a cool little, little trick I like to add in there. But um, that's about it. What you would do next in order to get it ready for texturing is you can select all of it and then just do a mesh combine to make it all one. Um, you don't have to, but I probably will when I texture it. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching and um, I'll see you guys next time for whatever we're creating. Bye guys.